morning, Tuesday. Oh. It is Tuesday, uh, as we get to know. Um, we are a bit of a celebration here in the office today. Uh, 12th of October 2018 was our very first auction. Um, i seen photos of it come up on my Google reminder. Uh, me and you standing with a cake. Uh, a friend, of, a good friend of ours got a cake made and everything. It was fantastic. Uh, cool. Little did we know where we'd be three years later. Um, I thought I'd be broke and destitute, but anyway, <laughs> you're trying your best to do that. I am. Um, so thank you to everybody. Uh, it is our third birthday. I really appreciate the support that we continually get and again we've received again this month uh, with another uh, big auction and um, today I said uh, I'm going to talk about a bit of independence because we've created our independence through the business so I thought independent bottlers and independent bars and independent labels very philosophical, very philosophical. <sighs> very big word Katie mm-hmm. don't be using big I words know. don't ask me to say it again no exactly um, as you know we have the lost Irish charity bottles and again it's just the lost Irish Lost Irish, that's what I said. What did I say? The Lost Irish. Okay. So we have... You can't not say The Lost Irish. <laughs> I mean, I know the brand's called Lost Irish, but you can't go, well, we just have Lost Irish. Okay. It's like the bottles of the dingle. <laughs> uh, can I go on with yeah, my rant? Sorry, sorry. My so bad. the lads are uh, sort of doing what... You know, it's been done for years in Ireland, uh, the independent bottlers and the independent bonders. Yeah. A lot of pubs, you'll still see whiskey bonder or um, independent bottler written on the side of them. So Louise then and JJ Curry, actually there's a bottle I didn't lift. Uh, I must... Which one are you looking for? Just a bottle of Louise's. There's, there's, there's actually... Actually, there's a very good one to have, the lock-in. Barry's the lock-in. Um, good point, Katie. What would you do that Sitting there, I would probably be wealthy and enjoying myself somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> Just celebrating the independence of own label whiskey. I mean, again, we've we've had everybody knows the story about IDL and how they came to be and what they sort of did for for the whiskey brands. But Cooley done the same, and Cooley, I think, opened the doors again for a lot of these brands to come back doing. Uh, independent bottlings and all that sort of stuff. So just wanted to touch on some of the history ones. So you had Preston's. So there's a nice set of Preston's that's going to be in uh, this month's auction. That's a, a full three bottle set uh, going together. Preston's were from Dread. Um Preston's, believe it or not, and I, I, I know a bit about this, is the, the old guy, uh, Martin was his name, uh, that worked in the distillery in Dundalk, yes. in, in the distillery lane. A lot of the Preston's uh, whiskey was bonded actually in Dundalk was and was bought out. And lane, that yeah. would have been old distillate from the old Kilbegan distillery as well, from uh, the Lox distillery. So that was Lox whiskey that was bonded in Dundalk, bought by Preston's when everything closed down here in Dundalk. And then obviously Jemson's had Preston's and they bottled it. So some of that could be really, really old Irish whiskey from the old Kilbegan distillery, bonded in Dundalk yeah. and bottled in Drada. Um, but that's one of the old ones. Then you have a bottle of Mary's here. Um, so Mary's uh, down in Clonmel. They're still in existence, uh, bottlers. Um, doing very well, actually. Um, I'm going to start with a bit of thought. So, Bose up the top. Anybody who knows Dublin knows that Bose has a, a great whiskey bar up in Dublin. Um, along with the Palace Bar and a few of the other ones, uh, a huge selection and a, and a, a firm favourite with whiskey drinkers. So they brought out two releases there. That's them there, um, the 12 year olds. Um, there's the eight year old from the Cross Keys in County Antrim. Beautiful little thatch pub. We mm. went up there, didn't we? It was a lovely, lovely place. Uh, the Irishman I have there as well is from, I'll just take Nick's bottles out of the way. Uh, the Irishman is from Dick Max. So Dick Max is building a hell of a reputation in Dingle and County Kerry for uh, his uh, whiskey bottlings as well as the choice of whiskeys yeah. that he has behind the bar. Uh, Lockery, new distillery over in Lanesborough, County Longford. Uh, the Palace Bar, our pal Willie, uh, that is one of the first bottlings that they've done. And I lifted a bottle of the green spot from the Palace Bar as well. Just to show that, like the this range of bottlings that the Palace 
has backed and they've literally put their money where the mouth is by having um, bottles of whiskey and, and putting it out there for everybody to taste and have. Up there, Nicky, boy. Up there. As soon as I'm putting them back up. Thoman kit. So Nick Ryan has... Uh, Nick Ryan would be known to a lot of people for his um, courses, the, the WSET courses. But Nick also is the, the brains behind and the man behind Thoman Gate uh, Whiskey. So he's wants to bring distilling back to Limerick. Yeah. But in the meantime, while he's pulling that together, he's uh, curated and he's also... Uh, was it this year was the first year that he done Harvest of Their he Own did, yes. Harvest of Their Own Grain that's going to be distilled for them their own whiskey but in the meantime he's got these uh, sourced whiskies uh, I think they're all GND I, maybe I'm wrong but I think they're all GND um, and he's done them in different finishes and different uh, cask maturation so Ruby Port Imperial Stout Red Ale I read the Red Ale one earlier on it's about someone being beheaded and something else or other. <sighs> History's not my forte, shall we say. Louise, when I mentioned uh, independent bottlings and whiskey bonders, Louise would, I think she would uh, address herself as the first of the new breed of whiskey bonders. Now, Dahi. I didn't lift a bottle of Dahi. Jesus, I'm really bad today. Yes. Uh, Dahi but might... Just a good... There's a good selection. Good of them selection of them. There is so many of them. That's why I was struggling a wee bit today. So Louise uh, not only was sourcing uh, aged whiskey to put in for her bottlings yeah. and all that. She's also in the time that she's been in existence has been sourcing new make and bottling that and casking that um, for herself going forward. The lock in was the highly sought after bottle that uh, Barry Chandler and herself came together to produce for his American uh, friends of Irish Whiskey in America. Uh, fans of Irish Whiskey in America group and they sold out and people lost their shit over that. I do believe Barry is bringing out some new releases. Uh, I did tell me on Friday night he let it slip. But you can't remember. But I can't remember. There you go. I did have a lot of whiskey in me. Um, Ali. Whiskey 21C. So this needs a mention because uh, every year at Whiskey Live, Ali has, everybody knows that all the funds that he raises goes to Down Syndrome. Yeah. Uh, he's a great advocate and great supporter of Down Syndrome Ireland. And um, he has, you're right, Jed. He's dying in the corner of the side, he's going. Just if you're going to die, will you go outside? Yeah. Thanks. Um, 21C, so we released a limited edition bottling for uh, the... The, the whiskey live, whiskey live yeah. that is a unique and very special blended Irish whiskey containing whiskey from 17 Irish distilleries wow. I mean that's just a piece of history in its own right and I mean never mind other blends and all that sort of stuff that is fantastic so there's Bushmills Shortcross Cooley Dingle Connacht Ecklenville Great Northern Pierce Pierce, Pierce uh, that's West Cork sorry I'm here going, I'm reading that way West Cork Kilbegan Pierce The Shed Teeling Tullamore Jew, Ballykeef, and I presume that's West Cork, is it? It's my own And did you get Royal Oak? Royal Oak. I did. Oh, Royal Oak. Oh, Royal Oak as well. Um, uh, they are done for charity every year. Only 120 bottles. That's bottle number 91. Yeah, it's 92. 92. You were and close. 120. Um, the Flying Tumbler. Here's one we've seen before. I've only seen this once previously in our auction, and that was in the early days, because I remember the, the customer asking me about it. Um... They were bottles that was done for the Irish Whiskey Museum. Okay. And that is a 13-year-old one. The reason why they'd be rare enough is because a lot of the, the tourists that would have been going in there would have been Americans or Asians or, or people from outside, outside Ireland. of Ireland and Europe. So they would have been swallowed up. So they were uh, a, a sherry cask that was done for uh, the Irish Whiskey Museum and 13-year-old think there's a nine-year-old and i think there's a 14 year old it's as fun. well uh, it's gorgeous look at the color of it as well um that is nearly me we have the curroch there we have the flying tumbler again the the range and breadth of irish whiskey now is getting fantastic and really is growing all the time 
So we've a lot of old label stuff like the the old Dubliner, and even something I love to see is the evolution of the bottles. So again, you know, when the old Dubliner uh, was brought out, or the old Dublin whiskey was brought out, now a lot of them were just in the standard tall seventy ml bottle. Whereas now we've got such a range of bottles, such a range of presentations. Uh, you got things like Bally Keefe now is doing in a lovely detailed box. Uh, the green spots everybody knows, uh, the Palace Bar one. But it's just lovely to see that it's growing and growing at a rate of knots. So we have plenty of them. Ones that I didn't mention, as I say, one that I didn't pull up was Dahi. We have another bottle of the Curragh there, there. Uh, what cami seaweed? What cami? What cami? <laughs> what cami seaweed? I'm not even going to try that one. Um, so there's loads of bottles like that, and I think that's enough of a rant and a rave for me today. Are you sure? Probably not. I'll remember loads of stuff, and I went, yeah. ah, should have said that. Yeah. Ah, should have said that. Um, and everybody will be all the some of the brands will be giving out and saying he didn't have any of this. No, we can't. We can't do that, everybody. No. If they give me t-shirts. Oh, seriously. Oh, come on. I've got a fairly thin t-shirt supply for for three years in existence. I mean, I should be able to wear a different t-shirt every day of the week and just like not throw them away. We could, I could give them to people. I could be like a generous benefactor in giving my t-shirts. Now, they could use them as tents, as 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 wind sails. They could use them as everything because if they've been on me, they am not housing. So <laughs> why wouldn't they do that? Um, that's it. Tomorrow we are going to talk about uh, Scotchists and Americanists. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, there is a some bit of a plan, at least. Yeah. No, um, it's it's a foundation. Yeah. I think anybody who knows us now at this stage knows that planning isn't my forte. No. Winging it. Absolutely, so it probably won't be Scotch and American tomorrow. It could be God totally knows different. what's going to happen. I just make shit up as I go along. True, yeah, true. Right, let's get this show ended because we've got work to do. Yay! Bye, talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>